What's up guys and welcome to Graphic Designer Pro. In this video, we'll show you how to set up, create and export a simple business card in Adobe InDesign. You can also download a free template file from the description below that will save you even more time and give you a guide to work with. So I'll pass you over to Rory now who will take you through the process. Thanks Ross. So before we start setting anything up, it's worth mentioning that with the free download that Ross mentioned, we have some assets already included in here. So we have a couple of Illustrator files with things like logos and patterns. We also have some exported EPS patterns that we're going to be using in this business card design. And we also have a simple text file just with some dummy text that we're going to be using as well. We'll also be including the final InDesign file that we create in this lesson so you can use that for reference or just as a shortcut to create your own designs but we're going to show you how to set up that business card in InDesign now. So jumping into the software I'm going to go ahead and create a new file. Now it's worth noting that we're based in the UK so we are going to base this on the most common size of business card in the UK which is 85mm by 55mm. This varies from country to country and we'll link a website down below that has some of the standard business card sizes for various countries countries so it's worth checking that out if you're based elsewhere and seeing what it says but of course you can create custom sized business cards as well. It's always worth just checking these things with your print service first, asking them what size it needs to be and how it needs to be supplied and we'll cover this a bit more when we go to export this. So I'm just going to go into the print tab up at the top and I can pick any of these presets, it doesn't really matter because I'm going to go and change these sizes anyway. So as I said this is 85mm wide by 55 mil height. I don't need this to be facing pages and I'm going to change the margins as well. Now this is slightly more personal preference but I would recommend to go no lower than 5 mil for your margins. This is because we don't want anything too close to the edge of the card that's not meant to be bleeding. So this is a kind of safe area if you will but I'm going to actually opt for a little bit more. I'll go for 6 mil and we can always adjust this afterwards so don't worry too much about it in this instance. And I'm also going to add a bleed of three millimeters. So again, this is a standard size of bleed in the UK. So I'm going to go ahead and click create and we have our document set up. First thing I'm just going to do is save this. So I'll just name this business card design click save. Okay so we're ready to go. So what I like to do first is just make sure my document is set up properly. I'm going to add a few layers over on the right hand side here. Now if you don't have this workspace set up you can get something similar by going up to window workspace and then we have essentials classic. So I'm basically using a customized version of the essentials classic workspace. You can also add any panels within this window menu. You can see we have layers here. We have things like properties as well. So anything I'm using, you can access via this menu as well. So in my layers, I'm just going to rename this first layer we have here, just BG for background. I'm going to add a few more. I'm going to call this one pattern. And then I'm just going to add one more and I'll just call this text and logo. So these will come in handy when we go to place in our elements. So we're going to be keeping this very simple. Now if I jump over to Illustrator, we have our logo and patterns files open that we've included in the download. So as you can see here, we have a very simple logo design here. We have a few variations and some icons and some colors set up. So what I like to do to create my color palette is just copy some of these elements over. So I've got these three blocks of colors here. The other two are just black and white, so I don't really need to copy them over. So I'm just going to press Command C, go back into InDesign and Command V. And I can just delete this, but what it means is these colors have now been added into my swatches here. I'm actually just going to get rid of the default color swatches here because I'm not going to be using them in this design. So I'm just left with my three brand colors here and my black and white. So the first thing I'm going to do is just add a background color to this front side of the card. So I'm going to make sure that I don't have any stroke applied. I don't need a stroke and I'm going to opt for this bright orange color. I want the front to be quite eye-catching and then we'll go with something quite contrasting on the other side of the card. So I'm going to grab my rectangle tool and making sure I go from the top left hand side of this red rectangle, that's the bleed area, I'm just going to click and drag my rectangle out. We always want to make sure anything that's going to be bleeding off the edge of the card is going to that red line. I'll need to go over to my layers as this has been placed 
paste on the top text and logo layer and all I need to do is click and drag this green square down to the bottom and now it's on this background layer. So what I'm going to do is just lock that and I'm not going to accidentally move this in any way. Next I'm going to go up to my pattern layer and if I go back into Illustrator I'll move over to my patterns Illustrator file. You can see I've set up a few simple designs based on this hexagon pattern trying to keep it in line with the style of the logo and thinking about the consistency of the branding. So it can be nice to try and create elements like this to bring in to a business card of this nature. And the reason I've done this in Illustrator is it's much easier to create and edit vectors within Illustrator and then bring them over into InDesign. That's really the strengths of each of them. So Illustrator is much better for the creation of graphics and we use InDesign to essentially arrange them and put them into compositions like a business card. So there's a few things to note in here. Over on the right hand side you can see we obviously have layers here. Now I've already exported these but I've not exported them with any of these background colours because we're already applying them in InDesign and the reason for that is because I want to be able to manipulate these patterns a little bit more separately from the background within InDesign. If I go to my artboard tool you'll notice as well that I've named all of these and this is really just for exporting so they're nice and organized and if I go over to my properties panel I've also set these up to fit the business card design so you'll notice that the dimensions actually read 91 by 61 and that's because I'm taking the bleed area into consideration so it's 85 by 55 and I'm adding 6 mil to that because of the bleed so if I go back into my links folder I've got this pattern EPS files so I've opted to export these as EPS files because there's too much detail in some of them to just copy and paste into InDesign and the EPS file allows us to retain a transparent background and because they're vector files the quality isn't going to be an issue we don't have to worry about things like pixelation so we'll jump back into InDesign I'll open up that folder again and we're going to import one of these patterns so because we've got this orange background I'm going to use this one called orange fade I'll click and drag this in and if I just click once as I say it's set up at the correct size already so I really just need to position this against the orange background you can see it's fitting perfectly if I press W on my keyboard we can switch to our preview mode to get a better idea of how this is going to look and what I might do in this situation is just take the opacity down I want it to be very subtle so I'm just going to go up to my opacity and I'll take it down to about 60% maybe and that's looking a little bit better to me so I can lock this layer now and I'll move up to my text and logo layer and on this front side I'm just wanting to keep this very simple and eye-catching so I'm just going to go back over to my logo design file I'll select this bottom middle option because it's sitting over a darker color which is what we'll need to do as well so just copying that command C we can copy and paste this one because it's a much more simplified design command V in here and I'll just scale this down so again I want to make sure I'm not going too close to the edges so we'll maybe go with something like that so that's one side of the business card done again we can play around with the colors we could try out some of the other patterns as well but this is really personal preference so what I'm going to do from here is just duplicate this page because there are some elements I want to manipulate so I'm just right clicking on it and selecting duplicate spread and I'm just going to delete the logo for a start and again we'll just work on the background initially so I'm going to unlock my background layer and we'll just adjust the color on this side as I was saying before I want to create some nice contrast between each side so I'm going to select the dark blue color instead and now we're going to need to change the pattern as well so I'll lock my background layer unlock the pattern layer we'll go back into our files and in this instance again I'll stick with this fade to keep it consistent with the front and I'll go for this file called patterns dark fade click and drag that over so that's looking a lot better what I'm going to do with this though is just have this appearing on one corner I don't want it to be quite so prominent on this side I'm just adjusting this frame which is going to crop out that top left hand side I might even move this off slightly just so it's very subtle just in the corner so that's looking better so now we're ready to start putting together the details within here so I'm going to go back up to my text and logo layer make sure the pattern and background are locked and I'm just going to start by grabbing my type tool and I want to make sure I'm aligning this to the margins here this is where InDesign is very useful it's very
very easy to keep things nicely aligned and spaced. So I'm just going to drag out a text box. It doesn't have to be particularly big. I'll go back into my links folder and just double click on this business card text. And I want to think about the grouping of each line of text here. So normally what you'll see on business cards is we'll have the name of the person and their position within the company grouped together. You then may have their personal contact details like their email and phone number grouped together and then potentially the website on its own at the bottom. Now this obviously can completely vary depending on the amount of details needed on the card but that's the approach I'm going to take for this example. So just selecting the name and position here I'm just going to press command C and command V to paste this in place. So again we want to think about the consistency of this. So I'm going to choose the fonts that we've used in the logo. Now that's a font called Woodford Bourne which you can download for free from FontSpring. We'll have a link for that in the description below. Select this text. I want the name to stand out the most so I'm going to make it bold. I'll keep it at 12 point for now but what I'll probably do is take the text below down to about 10 point. This is something that you may just need to adapt as you go through this process. I'm also going to make this white so it stands out against the background and already I'm thinking that the margin space is quite small because we don't have a huge amount of information to put on this so I don't want it all spread out too much. So what I'm going to do is go up to layout margins and columns and I'll maybe bump this up to about 8 mil and then that's just going to allow it a little bit more breathing room from the edge as well. Okay so we have our first grouping of text I'm just going to hold option or alt on a PC and click and drag down to create a duplicate of this text. I'll go back into my text file and select the next two lines of text. So these are the personal contact details and I'm going to match the formatting of the word CEO here. I don't want this to be as big either. So we'll go something like that and I'll just stretch this text box out. I'm just going to make this text box slightly bigger and give this a little bit more line spacing I'll go with about 15 point. Now this is where you might want to include things like small icons just to add another graphic element to denote what each of these lines is for but in this instance I'm just going to leave them as they are. Lastly we'll just grab the web address, copy that. Again holding option or alt on a PC I'm just going to create another duplicate, paste the web address in. Now we have our three groupings of content. Just going to add a touch more space between these and from this point I'm just going to distribute the spacing so it looks a little bit more equal so selecting all three of them I'm going to go to my align panel and then under the distribute spacing option I'm just going to choose the distribute vertical space so it's not making a huge difference but it's enough just to create equal space between each grouping of text. Now this is already looking good what I might do is just add a couple of more elements I'm going to go back over to my illustrator file and I'm going to grab one of these icons. So I think this orange one will work the best. I don't want it to be too big. I'll copy this, go back into InDesign, Command V to paste it in. Again I'll get my guides back up and I'm just going to click and drag this to the top right hand corner and I want this to be the same height as the text here. So I'm just holding shift and scaling from the top until we get our smart guides telling us it's the same height and I'll just move this over to that top right hand side. I press W again. This is creating quite a nice organized looking card. Lastly I'm just going to add some dividing lines just to add another graphic element and another wee pop of color. So again pressing W here holding shift with my line segment tool. I'm going to flip the fill and the stroke. If I just preview this that's looking okay it's quite heavy this line so what I might do is just from my stroke options choose a dotted line instead. I think that's looking a little bit nicer and again holding option I'm just going to click and drag this down and what I can do again is just click and drag over these elements and go back to my line panel and just make sure they are distributed properly as well. And that's it for a very simple business card design. Now of course we could try out different colors and different layouts but for me this is working well. So now I'm going to go ahead and export it. I've set up all of the designs in Illustrator in a CMYK color space as you can see. So I know that all the colors are set up properly. Now this is something to be very careful of if you're creating a design for print you normally always want to make sure that it's in the CMYK color space. So all I'm going to do is go up to file export and from here I want to make sure I select the Adobe PDF print preset and then click save. 
Up at the top here, I'm just going to select the high quality print preset as well. That's going to be fine for most print outputs, but again, this is something you should always check with your printer as they may have specific requirements. I'm just going to leave this as pages. Some printers, again, may require each side supplied as a separate file. So if you check the create separate PDF files option, that will do that for you. I'm just going to leave this unchecked for this example. I want to uncheck optimize for fast web view as I don't want any any kind of compression applied. I'm going to click view PDF after exporting just so we can check this. And lastly, I'm just going to go into marks and bleeds. Now again, this is printer specific. So this is another thing you should check before exporting. But in this case, I'm just going to select all printers marks and I want to click the use document bleed settings. And as you can see below, this is going to adopt this three mil bleed that we've already applied. So from here, I'm just going to go ahead and click export. And this is our final print ready business card file that we could essentially send to a printer to get printed. So there you have it. Creating simple business cards like the example in this video should be a simple process using these techniques. And if you have any questions then drop a comment down below and we'll do our best to help. And if you want to learn more about graphic design we've created a free one hour training where you'll discover the top five secrets of successful designers which saves you the hassle of having to figure it all out for yourself. We'll be showing you how to immerse yourself in the sector you're designing for, creative thinking and how to spark creativity, what good composition is and how you can achieve it in your designs, how to pick the right colors for your designs and how to pick the right typefaces for your projects. So if you are serious about leveling up your design skills, then make sure to sign up for the next free webinar. Space is limited and these events always fill up fast because they're significantly better than the information others charge you and ours is free. The link is in the description. You're not going to want to miss it. I'll see you there.